Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are here and our hope is that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We have Rev. C.A. Benjamin of FIBA India sharing God's word with us today from Psalm 87. He reminds us that we are all on a spiritual journey where we need to long for the presence of God and keep choosing to trust Him. Will you open your heart to hear from God and make Him alone your strength? I want to thank my brother Gershaw for inviting me to be with you in the service and also to share God's word. Let's focus on Psalm 84 on the theme, Spiritual Journey. Psalms has always been a great encouragement to all of us. When we stand at the crossroads, when we feel very low, when we look for directions, when we need encouragement, the first book that we turn to is the book of Psalms. Every time we read, we are encouraged. This morning, I want us to look at one such psalm, that is Psalm 84, which gives us some guidelines to know if our spiritual journey is healthy. How do I measure my spiritual journey? We don't want others to tell us, but we ourselves must have some way to measure our spiritual journey. There are two ways to measure success in life. One is external the other is internal. External measures are all of those things outside of you, like um, money, possession, career, and even whether people like us or not. When you measure your success based on those things, then your happiness becomes something that is largely out of your control. The internal measuring is different. We measure our success by things like personal and spiritual growth, meaning and purpose in life, creativity and living with passion. The Bible tells us that we, when we have a living connection with Jesus Christ, then our lives will flow out from deep within us. In John's Gospel, Chapter 7, verse 38. This happens because of the presence of the Holy Spirit that God gives us when we trust in Jesus. You read about this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. When that happens, we don't exist from the outside, but from the inside out. Let's look at Psalm 84. This was written for the choir director to lead the people of God in worship. The author of the psalm is one of the sons of Korah. They are from the tribe of Levi. <clears throat> they had the responsibility of being gatekeepers. You read about them in First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 19. They provided security in the place of worship. Maybe this was written for the pilgrims. When you read the psalm, you hear the heart of a person who is longing to grow in a spiritual journey. He is answering the question, who is the one who is truly blessed? Going through the psalm, you and I at the end will know where we are in our spiritual journey or are we truly blessed. Look at Psalm 84. Look at verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. And then you read verse 12. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. Three times the word blessed is used. Number 1. A truly spiritual person longs to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Verse 1 to 4. Look at verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. The psalm is not admiring the architecture of the church building. 
He is longing to be in the presence of the Lord. Looks like he has enjoyed in the past and for some reason is missing on it. It's like us. We enjoyed the fellowship of God's people all these years and the last few years because of the lockdown and because of what is happening around us, it's all online and nothing like meeting in the house of God with the people of God. And now we understand what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, I am longing to be in the presence of God's people. I'm longing to be in the temple to worship the Lord. And he uses the word, look at verse 2. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. The earning, which means I long to accomplish. The verb used here is similar to the English idiom of missing someone or something. A sense of incompleteness if I don't enter, if I'm not part of the fellowship of God's people. To earn for the Lord means that your soul is incomplete. You're missing that what only God can provide when you worship him in spirit and truth. That there is nothing in this world outside of God that can complete the deepest longings for fulfillment in my heart. His longing of the heart is seen when he is envious of the sparrow. Look at what he says. Verse 3, even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay a young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. You know what the psalm is saying? You know, those old cathedrals when you see, you know, you find the pigeons or the birds building the nest in the church, in the church building. And the psalm is saying they are privileged. They are 24 bar 7 inside the sanctuary. I long, I earn. They are, I, I want something like that to be in the presence of God. My friend, do you have the same earning to be in the presence of the Lord? Longing to be in the fellowship of God's people? We can have great worship. Sometimes we can be inside the church. We can enjoy great worship, great songs. But within us, we find there is no fulfillment. What's the reason? Sometimes we can attend the service, come back with one person is saying, oh, what a great time we had worshiping the Lord. The other person does not see any sense in it. It's a what great time. What is the reason? Is it the worship or something else? I believe that we can be part of a great worship and yet my heart is not into it. Like Luke's Gospel chapter 15. The prodigal son came back. There was a lot of celebration, but the eldest brother could not enjoy what is happening on the inside because his heart was not tuned to the Father. Is it possible? I believe there are four reasons why we are not able to enjoy that longing, that fellowship, that worship. One, it could be an unrepentant heart. It could be because there is something in me that is holding me back. I'm yet to repent of that. As long as that is there, I am not able to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. The second reason it could be an unrelenting heart. I don't want to yield. Yes, I've been hearing the word of God, but then I don't want to yield to what I hear because if that is so, then I have to let go that which has been close to me for many years like the rich young ruler. He came to the Lord with the right question, with the right Answer. He received the right answer, but he took a wrong decision. He could not just give in. The third reason could be an unreconciled heart. I am not able to get along with my brother. I carry that bitterness in my heart. So every time I come to worship the Lord, there is something within me that is stopping me. Unrepentant heart, unrelenting heart, an unreconciled heart. And then the fourth thing, an unrighteous heart. My ways are so different, Lord. I know that I am not in tune with you. There are things that is in me that is totally different from what you want me to do, O Lord. Well, that's the kind of desire that the psalmist said, I long, I earn. He's expressing the desire for God. This morning, even as you worship, apart from just coming into the fellowship to have a wonderful time with the people, with the believers of God, do I come with a deep longing and earning, Lord, 
I want to worship you. Notice that there are six references in the psalm to some aspects of God's house. He talks about God's dwelling place, the courts of the Lord, the altars of the Lord, the house of the Lord, the court, and then the house of the Lord. Those words pop up again and again and again. For us today, the place of worship, fellowship with God is a place of atonement and sacrifice, a greatest experience of the presence of God. It's not found in a building. It's found in our relationship to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ replaced the old temple. In fact, as we are united in Jesus Christ through faith, we ourselves become a temple of the Lord. Blessed is the person who longs to be in the presence of the Lord. And look at what he says. My soul longs as faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Lord, what a joy it is to come and worship the living God. I can speak to him. He's a personal Lord. He's a Lord who ministers to my need. I can exalt your name, O Lord. I can come as I am and worship you. Do you have that earning? If that is slowing down, my friends, if that is weaning out, remember, we need to look back and say, Lord, what is it that is robbing me of that longing? I used to have that longing, but now nothing to do with the age, nothing to do with our possession. It's a heart problem. So we need to ask this morning, do I have the same zeal, the joy to worship the Lord? The second thing you find here, a truly spiritual person, verse 5 to 7, his strength is in the Lord. Look at verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. These are people. Their hearts are set on a pilgrimage. In whose hearts are the highway to Zion? Their hearts are set on a journey. They know. They knew where they were going. They, their dependence was on the Lord. And they depended on Him for strength. The psalmist knows that on the journey there are challenges, there are things that will distract you, that can discourage you, that can disappoint you, that can pull you away from that single focus. I'm sure you have experienced that in your walk with the Lord. You know that the destiny, your destiny is heaven, to be in the presence of God. But then as you were growing in your spiritual journey, there were many things on the way that Threaten to pull you away from the Lord. But stay focused. And these days we have a lot of temptations around us. There could be many things. Satan is active. But remember, Satan is mighty. But the your Lord and my God is almighty. Paul text, tells Timothy, Timothy, Demas, love the world. Love the world. He moved away from that calling. He moved away. He was part of the journey. But because he loved the world, he drifted away. There will be obstacles. There will be challenges. But he, people who trust the Lord, people who are truly spiritual, their strength is in the Lord as they walk on this pilgrimage. Look at what Job is saying in Job 17 verse 1. Job 17 Verse 1. My spirit is broken. My days are extinct. The graveyard is ready for me. It is natural for us to feel this way. The psalmist says, Blessed is the person whose strength is in the Lord. We cannot overcome these by our own strength. Sometimes it is too much for us. We ask, Lord, why should I go through it, O Lord? Am I, am I not your child? Lord, I have been faithful all these years. I've been following you, Lord. I've been reading the word. I'm a worship leader. Lord, I'm a preacher of the word. I, Lord, 
I don't know, but sometimes my knees wobble, oh Lord. I'm not able to stand firm. Lord, I just feel like quitting. Four times the word Lord of hosts is used, is mentioned in the psalm. It means the Lord who fights our battles. I depend on you, Lord. Lord, I depend on you. I always said this, and let me repeat it here once again. In the battlefield, we are not defenders. We are dependers. We depend on the Lord, and Lord, he fights the battle for us. We need not fight. We just have to stand and watch the Lord fighting the battle for us. And I'm sure this morning, many of you will say, I came to the point of just giving up and the Lord strengthened me. The Lord lifted me up. He used the pastor, he used the church members, he used others. Even a call was there to encourage me. The journey in Psalm 84 is marked by two things. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. Number one is perseverance. As we go through the valley of Baca, it is not if we go or when we go. As we go through it, we make it a valley of springs. Yes, there is a part of us to play. There is a part for all of us to play as we go through it. The valley of Baca means valley of weeping, valley of tears. Well, it is probably a valley east of Jerusalem that pilgrims would pass through in order to get to the city. It was an arid, dry valley, like a desert, and they need sustenance on the journey. So what they often do is dig a cistern and then wait for the rain to come and fill the cistern so that there would be a place of water, there would be a source of water. The word baka is related to a word that sounds very familiar, similar to the word for weeping. So sometimes it is translated the valley of weeping, the valley of tears. I need not explain. I won't be wrong to say all of us at one stage or the other have gone through that valley. Maybe the COVID time was severe, but there have been times when we sat alone and it looked as if we were the only one going through that valley and there was no one to help. This word, in the singular form is translated as balsam trees in Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 23. It was a tree or shrub which grows in arid places. The balsam trees would drip sap when they were cut and therefore give the appearance of weeping. So the psalmist describing this valley, I think, gives almost a metaphorical meaning, the valley of tears. It is a valley that was so difficult to handle. Remember Joseph in his divine pilgrimage of God's providence as he went through that valley all by himself. It is recorded for us in the book of Genesis about eight times he wept. We read of David through all of his great kingship and reigning in majesty. But Ed, you, when you read the Psalms, you will feel his heartache and the trial. Seven times we read this great king wept. We read Jeremiah. He's the prophet of tears. He's called the weeping prophet. The whole book of Lamentation is his writing of how he wished that his whole head were a river of waters. We read of David's men on one occasion that they wept sorely to the extent they had no more power and strength to weep. I'm sure you would have been there. I'm sure you would have seen people go through that. The eyes are dry. No more strength to weep. Lord, everything is gone. For some, 
the walk is still there. We are still walking through the valley of Baca. Some of you would have just come out of it. Some of you are saying, Lord, I'm afraid I don't want to go through it. Psalm 6, David says that he wept so much that his bed was swimming in his own tears. Ah, what a verse. His bed was swimming in his own tears. Remember Peter? After he betrayed the Lord and the Lord Jesus gave him that glaring look, the Bible says Peter turned, looked, and he wept. Notice what he says in the psalm. As we go through the valley of weeping, they make a place of springs. I love the way the old King James Version puts it. They dig a well. It teaches something about our own journey towards God. We often go through difficulties through the valley of Baca, but there is something that you and I can do. We can dig that well so that the valley of tears becomes a place of nourishment and sustenance in our lives. In other words, you don't just stop there in the valley and keep on weeping and weeping and weeping. You don't just sit there and die in the desert. You just pass through the valley. You use the means of grace so that the others who are following you will see that this valley of Baca has turned into the springs. That's what he says. They make it a place of springs. Only a child of God can turn that valley of Baca into a place of springs. Why? Because the Lord is their strength and their portion. The Lord does not push you into the valley. He accompanies us into the valley. Talk to him. Talk to him. That is why David said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Well, that's the part of that journey involves. It's marked by perseverance. The second thing in this journey, it's not only perseverance, it is progress. In this journey, when we are faced with challenges, we depend on Him. We don't grow weaker and weaker because we face these, but we go from strength to strength, trusting Him. We all will appear before God. Sometimes the Lord takes us through the valley of Baca so that He will display our dependence on Him. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, Second Chronicles, Chapter 20, verse 15 to 17. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Zis, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. You know that incident. When Jehoshaphat looked back, he saw the enemies coming towards him. Jehoshaphat cries out to the Lord and he said, Lord, I am powerless, I am helpless, but my eyes is fixed on you. The battle belongs to the Lord. And then the Lord tell, tells Jehoshaphat, send the army, set them, tell them, take the positions. Now, friends, if the Lord is already fighting the battle for us, why should we take position? If I was there, I would have told the Lord, Lord, first fight the battle, Lord, let me see the victory and then... We will take that position. We are afraid now. What happens if I take that position and the enemies attack me? The Lord is saying, trust me. Take that position. You need not do anything. You stand and watch the victory. Friends, sometimes as we go through the valley of Baca, we need to depend on the Lord and say, Lord, the battle is yours. I will go through the valley because I know that I'm not alone. You will fight the battle for me. Only a child of God can turn the valley of Baca into springs. Valley of springs. The place of springs. Blessed are those who dwell in his house. Blessed are those whose strength is in the Lord. 
Thirdly, blessed are those who trust in him. Look at verse 8 to 12. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Take a look at this prayer. He is expressing his desire to the Lord. First of all, he says, expresses desire to the Lord. He says, Lord, hear my prayer. Look on the face of your anointed. You know, sometimes we go through pain and it's a natural response, isn't it not? Lord, why are you silent? Are you on a sabbatical, Lord? Lord, I want to hear you. I want to listen to your voice. Sometimes, oh Lord, I feel so lonely and I wish that you are there right here to lift me up. And the psalmist is saying, you know the heart of pain that he's going through. And he says, Lord, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. Listen to my cry. Can I tell you something this morning? Even if your words are not heard, the Lord listens to your heart. <clears throat> Leave alone seeing your heart. He listens to your heart. He understands <clears throat> the unspoken words. He knows how to interpret what you're going through. Sometimes we come and say, Lord, I don't feel like praying. I don't know what to pray. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit inside you groans within you. This morning, blessed are those who trust in him. Look on the face of your anointed, O Lord. Lord, only you know what I'm going through. But I will never take my eyes off you. Lord, I will never loosen that grip, O Lord. I will hold on. <clears throat> the second thing he says, he not only expresses the desire to God, to the Lord, he expresses his desire to dwell in the house of the Lord. Look at that verse. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Lord, that's my longing. Remember, Lord, I said, blessed is the one who dwells in the house of the Lord. That's my longing. It is not just words. I deeply desire to be there. And the Bible says when we trust in the Lord and do not lean on our own understanding in all his ways, acknowledge him. And the Bible also says he will grant the desires of your heart. Isn't this a desire? What is your desire? What is your desire in your walk with the Lord? And then you find here, he not only expresses his desire to the Lord, he not only expresses desire to dwell in the house of the Lord, Thirdly, he expresses his need for the favor of the Lord. Look at that verse. But the Lord God is sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. It looks as if, Lord, that you're not giving the best. May I say this? The Lord may not give what you're seeking. But he will certainly give that which is best for you. Don't doubt it. The sun and the shield. The favor of God. It is a protection of God. It is the favor of God that is constantly upon a child of God. In the midst of all the turmoil. In the midst of all the affliction. In the midst of all the pain. In the midst of all the uncertainty. Even in my confusion. Wherever I Lord. I know that. Lord, sometimes I may take my eyes off you, but you don't take your eyes off me. I know, O Lord, that you're watching me. My going out and coming in is watched by thee. This morning, Lord, I trust you. I know you will not withhold that which is good. That's what the word of God says. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. What a psalm. 
a psalm that will help us to ask, how is my spiritual journey? How is my spiritual life? How is my intimacy with God? Do I long to be in the house of the Lord? When I rise up, it's not just the Sunday worship I'm talking about. I'm talking about a deep longing to spend time alone in the presence of God. You know, in Psalm 90 verse 14, Psalm 90 verse 14, look at what Moses says. Moses says, Satisfy me, O Lord, early in the morning, early in the morning that I will sing songs till the end of my life, not till the end of the day. Lord, satisfy me early in the morning. I do not know how the day is going to be. I do not know what my experiences are going to be. But Lord, I pray this prayer that you will satisfy me with loving kindness and mercy. That's the security I need as I travel through the day. That's what Moses said. Look at what this chorus, the songs, the, son, the sons of Korah say. Lord, I need you. I need you. I want to be in your presence. I want to celebrate your presence along with the people of God. Do I display my dependence on God when I go through the valley of Baca? Or do I murmur and complain and say, I don't know why God is taking me through. We are human. Yes, the Lord understands. We have questions like Job. We too can cry out like David. But in the midst of all this, do I still depend on the Lord, His strength? Do people see that I have made it into a spring of joy? Has the experience made me stronger? What am I doing with these experiences? Do I trust Him enough to hear my prayer and to bestow me with favor? Do I believe with all my heart he will not withhold that which is good. Do I trust him to be my shield and son, my protector and my provider? Friends, this morning, pause for a few minutes and ask yourself, let me ask myself, Lord, I want to measure my spiritual journey. These three things. Do I have a deep desire to spend time in your presence? Do I enjoy the fellowship of God's people singing praises to God? Or is it just going down a Lord? Lord, do I depend on you more and more as I go through this valley of Baca? Or do I draw strength from others? Or do I come to you, running to you, O Lord? And I know my Redeemer liveth. No good thing he will withhold. That also I know, Lord. I trust you. I trust, for you. I trust you, Lord. I seek your favor. Lord, hear my cry. Hear my prayer. Hear my longing, O Lord. These are my desires. This morning, let us be truthful in the presence of God. No one else know. Others will measure my activity. Others will measure the way I do things. But only the Lord knows the condition of my heart this morning. Let's ask the Lord and make that simple prayer. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, and know my thoughts, I pray. Where can I go, Lord? I can't hide from you. To you I come this morning as I am. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Meet with me. Strengthen me and put me back on the track. I want to celebrate that intimacy with you, Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful spiritual journey walking with the Lord. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing, and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion, 
and to connect with us, go to weazion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus finds life.